Okay, welcome back everybody. This will be uh, part five of my uh, landing craft. Um, I filmed this video about a, oh, about a week ago. And at the end of this video, I, I, I tell you is that probably one more, uh, the next video it would be finished. Well, I, I decided to uh, stretch it out to two more. Uh, I've got a lot of little things I did and uh, things I like to show you. And instead of making the last video extra long video, I decided to split it up into two. So, uh, yeah, uh, part seven will be the final video. So uh, ignore what I say at the end of this clip. Uh, you can see I went and got myself scalped. Girl messed it up this time, cut it too short. Uh, I'm not, not the kind of guy that likes short hair. Uh, at this age, if I got it, I want to show it. <laughs> Alright, so um, really that's about all I got to say. Uh, it, you know, I uh, got got I got it pretty far along, but I got a lot of little pieces all to put together, and a couple other little things I wanted to do, a little above and beyond, you know, what was called for. So uh, that's why I'm going to stretch it out to two more. All right. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into this clip. Okay. So here we are. I uh, got to turn my lens around again. I made quite a bit of progress from that last video. I uh, got a lot of parts all glued together and everything. Um, if you remember from some of my other videos, another little piece of styrofoam I've got from some packing uh, and a piece of felt, and she fits right in there. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is I went ahead and painted the bottom black, so I wanted to try and protect it. Um, made a little mistake when I was sanding and I kind of hit the edge of it so I got to repaint the black again so uh, I got it all re I got it all sanded down I'll be reshooting it again that's a flat black is what I got there um, got my little rudder working but uh, yeah I got to reshoot this black again it's no big deal but that's why I did it like this to protect that so I ain't scratching it up on the table. Okay. Uh, most of it's all glued together. Uh, the only part that I really got to get in here is the, uh, the engine cover area in this. But I got to hold off on this. I got to have to paint this off of, the, off of the boat so I can get down in some of these areas. And it'd be much easier trying to paint that off of the boat instead of down in there so that's why I haven't got that glued in yet but I've uh, I've got my back part glued on where'd my pointer go there he is uh, I've got my back section all glued on I've got my two side pieces glued on on each side got the deck in there that's all glued in and uh, what I'm in the process now of doing is, uh, well, here's what I've done. You know, once I got this glued on there and sanded it smooth with the hull of the, of the boat there where that rope used to be, I went all the way around and sanded it smooth. Then I took a piece of this, uh, I call it half round, all right? You can see that right there, half round. And uh, I went around the edge of the ship with it, or the boat. I don't know what this is, a boat or a ship. And uh, I just took this and went around the edge. Laid it there where that rope used to be, okay? And I came around the back. This was just long enough. It went past halfway. And I took my lighter, my little butane lighter, and... As I was getting back here, I was heating it up. You got to be careful with this little thing. This will melt it in a minute. So I kind of hold it away from it and heat it up and just slowly bend it around that arch and then glued it down. So that's how I managed to get that all the way around that edge. Because this picture here, 
that I've got that does look like a half a half round molding now they can make that out of wood that's no big deal but it, it looks like it goes half round but you can see the difference here in, the, in the, what one of these really looks like how they come to a point back here in the back and this one's more rounded um, I got a comment from uh, my buddy Pete over there in the Netherlands who um, Oh, what's the kit manufacturer, Italia, that makes one of these? And I, I've seen some good pictures of it, and I think their rendition of it, or their their model kit, I should say, from Italia, is a much more authentic looking uh, landing craft than this one is. But... Also, it's twice as expensive, you know. And everything I'm trying to do here to make this look right is already done on, from what I've seen on that Italia kit. It's already got the, the two little hatch covers. It's already got these, uh, these brackets in on here that are open like they're supposed to be. Uh, if you remember, I talked about these. It should be open inside of here. And the ones that came with the kit were not. They were just a solid piece. So, and what I've done with that is, I just took some little strips here. Little strips of styrene that I cut up. I don't know if those are showing up. Cut them about oh, a little over two millimeters wide. And uh, I laid, I laid one piece flat on here and then laid another piece flat up against the side and I got one more here to go I was going to show you how I did this but then you take another piece and turn it on its edge and glue it between them two okay and the problem was every one of these there's five of them every one of them the angles were different you know even though that's a 90 degree angle there to there all these little angles that you had to cut were all it, it was you just had to keep trimming and cutting and trimming and cutting and get trying to get it right so here's my last one right here and it's going to go right in there like that okay so all i'm doing is uh taking a little bit of my glue here and like i said now these are on there flat and this is going to be on its edge Okay, I'm going to put it on there like that on its edge. So I just take a little bit of glue, put a little on the on the edge of that, and a little bit on the edge of that, and then I just stick it on here. And then I got to look at it real good and see that I got it centered. Got to center it up on here. And there it is. And my ramp just fell down. So, that's how I did each and every one of those. And I don't know if it's showing up, but you can see there's an opening in there now where I can run some rope. Okay. So, uh, Next thing to do is, oh yeah, I did show you the bottom. I, I showed you that, that I painted it black. But I also have all my uh, stuff that goes on down here. I don't know what you want to call this, keel or whatever. And uh, got my little rudder working. I showed you that. But uh, yeah, next thing to do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it outside and uh, get primer on all this. I also put them extra little pieces right here. Okay, it went from this piece here over to that machine gun turret. I put them extra little pieces on there and made sure that this bulkhead here was all flush with this. And I had put a little putty in here. I got to straighten it out. I'm sure once I primer this, it's going to show me my mistakes. Uh, I've got my holes drilled in there for my cleats. 
So uh, yeah, next thing to do is I'm gonna take this out. Uh, I'm gonna tape off the bottom. I don't want to get no primer on the bottom, but I'll I'll probably tape it off from here on down and shoot this with primer so I can see what what needs to be taken care of. She's coming along. But yeah, like I said, uh, from what I've seen, um, and I've read about it too, about the, uh, the I, I, I tell you, I don't know how you say it. Anyway, their model is a much better uh, looking model than this. It, it's already got all this stuff done that I had to do to bring this up to date and make it look right. Um, but you're going to pay for it, you know. But I've had fun doing this, you know. It was it was a challenge. Well, how am I going to figure these out? How am I going to do this? Uh, what about making this? And uh, that was part of the fun of building this model. Uh, I got one other thing to say. Uh, there's a guy keep keeps leaving me comments. Uh, your 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 channel, I guess, what it would be called is Life After Work. Now, if you're watching this, Mr. Life After Work, you got your reply button turned off. I cannot reply to any of your comments. And you're always, when you leave one, you use usually leave two or three at a time. So uh, I don't know if that's the way you want it. You don't want me to reply to you. That's fine. But uh, the reason I don't reply to you is you got the button turned off. Get on YouTube, type in re reply button. It'll show you how to set that. Because you leave me some good comments once in a while and I can't reply to you. Uh, one of the comments you made was about how this was uh, made for kids and that. Well, you know, back in the 70s, there was a lot of modelers that were older than, than uh, little kids and, and things that did a lot of stuff. I remember when I was a kid, I put a model truck in a, in a car show and the average age of the guys, I would say, was in their mid-twenties at least. And uh, so they just weren't made for kids, you know. This was just what you expected from back then with the technology we had. And, uh, and like I said, you know, how many people really knew what one of these looked like? Now you got the Internet and can see that, hey, there was uh, little hatches back here. Um, this thing was all shaped wrong. You know, things like, like these little brackets. Um, you know, if you, if back in the seventies, you wouldn't have known any better. You would have just went ahead and put this model together and not made any changes. It just wasn't for kids. You know, these models were, there was a lot of older fellas putting these things together. Okay. Uh, I got a little clip coming up. I, uh, I went ahead and uh, built my uh, 30 cows, so I'm going to show you that. I filmed that a couple days ago, so uh, we're just going to jump right into that. I made some changes to them, and I think they look, they turned out pretty nice. So, uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, let me jump into that uh, little video clip I got coming up of the uh, 30 cows, and then uh, we'll be back, and I'll probably have this primer by then. Okay, I read on a forum where uh, someone said that the 30 cal machine guns that you get with the kit aren't very good. They uh, had a lot to be desired. Well, I thought they were pretty nice. I, I thought, you know, hey, that looks pretty good for as small as it is. It's a little machine gun. Uh, yeah, you can go and buy some from uh, some photo etch, somebody that sells it. But I decided, well, let me see what I can do with these. Here's one laying here. Let me get it on my little clip. All right. Now, that's not too bad looking. All right. That's not a bad little 30 cal. But what I've done, and I'll show you this here. What I had, what I did is, and I, I didn't paint this one yet because I wanted you to be able to see what I've done. But... I put a little piece of styrene plastic up here to simulate the lid to the ammunition uh, box on the side of it, okay? I put a little piece of styrene right there 
to simulate the uh, sight, you know, that gets flipped up when they want to raise it up. All right, and then I put me a little set of handles on it. Now, I don't know if those are showing up real good. But you can see the two, uh, more or less, pistol grips, if you want to call them. Okay, that I put on the back. And that really set this thing off. It made it, this right here alone, these two little grips, really set this thing off. Now, I know I'm probably going to get some guys say, no, hey, wait a minute, a 30 cal machine gun in World War II had a, like a pistol grip on it, came off the back. Well, I did find some pictures, and I, I you know, I looked all around, and matter of fact, there's uh, one of these landing craft that somebody rebuilt has got two 30 caliber machine guns sitting on it with the double pistol grip so that you could grab it like that, okay? But when you look up a 30 cal from World War II, most of the time they just got one, one handle right in the center, a pistol grip. Looks just like a pistol grip. But I went with these uh, two on the side. I, I figured that when you're in that little confined space that you are back here, you know, and you're trying to swing this gun around, it's easier to swing it around with two hands on it. Okay, so that's why I went this way. Now, here's the other one, all painted up. Now, I do want to take the pistol grips on there and right in the center of them, right around here, I'm going to paint them brown because that was wood in there. Uh, the two little grips right in the center were made out of wood. So I'm going to paint that brown once this dries. But I think she came out looking pretty good. That's one of them all painted up. So, you know, yeah, straight out of the box, they had something to be desired. But once again, you, you just use a little bit of imagination and take what you got and, uh, and, and make them. Now, these little grips I made, I took a paper clip, okay? And that's probably not even showing up. It's just a regular old paper clip out of my staple, stapler. And I cut off one end of it, okay? And then I found a, uh, a clothespin here that this distance right in here was just about the right distance that I needed to make that grip. So I cut off one end, held it on there, bent it around, bent, held it on there like that. Now I had this paper clip apart and then bent the other end down and around and then kind of hammered it flat a little bit and then I had to trim it and that's how I got my little pistol grips. Just like that. And once this gets painted up, I'm painting them flat black. And once they get painted up, you'll never know the difference. And, uh, you know, there was supposed to be like a little sight here that you could pop up. Um, that's just a little piece of styrene strip. Not very thick at all. I didn't want nothing big there. It hardly even shows up, but it is there. So, like you know once again like I said a little bit of imagination uh, creativity and I think I got a nice looking 30 cal gun to go back there I think that's gonna turn out just right looks good to me let me zoom in on them a little bit for you and see how that works I can only go so far and then I lose focus. Let me adjust the camera so I don't lose them. A little bit too far. So there you go. That's my 30 cows. Okay. Well, here she is all primered up. Got her uh, looking pretty good, I think. Uh, 
I do have a, a couple little seams I see from all this work right back in this area here uh, that need to be taken care of and a couple little spots where these two pieces glued together there. Uh, what I'm going to be using for that is this Formula 560. I've showed this in some of my other videos. Uh, you just get some down into them little seams that you got and then you take a wet Q-tip or a cotton bud and uh, you go along and, and wipe up the excess and it'll stay right in them little areas where you want it to be and that'll take care of that. That'll make that look a lot better. Um, but I left this paper on here because I'm going to be sanding on this, cleaning it up a little bit. I got a little sanding work to do back here on the back uh, to make this look a little better. And then I'll, I'll shoot another coat of primer on it. But uh, yeah, she looks pretty good. Now this paper here I'm using, let me show you this. I showed you this in another video. Um, I bought this from a uh, auto parts store. And it's the kind of store you go to if you're doing uh, any kind of body work on a car or anything. They sell paint supplies, uh, anything you might need if you're going to paint a car. And this little roll here... It comes pre-taped. There's a piece of tape on that paper already and it uh, it unfolds so it gives you this big old piece of paper here and you just lay that tape on there around there and unfold it and that beats having to use a whole bunch of this uh, blue tape to tape up your model. Then you can just pick it up and get your hand down under there like that and, and it keeps uh, everything else, you know, from getting paint on it. So that's why I left it on there. I got to redo that. I want to re put another coat of primer on there. But uh, yeah, these little brackets came out pretty nice. They look pretty good. Okay. Um, I think we probably only got one more video to go. I think next video it'll be done. I just got to get all my little parts together. I've got to get this painted off of the thing and then get it down in there. And then I've got to get this little uh, wooden box set up here. Got to get that all painted up. Okay. And then little reels of wire. Uh, life preserver goes up here. Anchor goes up here. A couple other little things that go inside. I gotta get them all taken care of. The little uh, steering wheel or ship's wheel. Uh, I gotta get my cleats on here yet. Gotta get them two holes drilled back there for that. So there ain't a whole lot to do. Uh, I'll have this done. I should have it finished up in the next video. Next video will probably be a long one. So uh, be prepared for that. Uh, let me show you something here on my uh, 30 cows I didn't show you before. Let me move this out of the way a little bit. Um, when you put these together, there's, there's a couple pieces that go together here, and there's two little pins here that hold it together, and the way I did mine, I didn't glue them little pins in. I just put them together and, and let friction hold it together, and that way I can move my 30 cows. See, I can position them up or down however I want. So that'll work out pretty good once I get him on there. I still got to get the little uh, shield on here yet that goes on here like that. But I got to get this painted up. This will be painted the color of the, of the boat. And then I'll get them on there. And my 30 cows will be ready to go. But uh, yeah, she's coming along pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, I think part of the fun of building this, is, you know, like I've, I've mentioned before, you know, this was a little weekend project, and I turned it out into about a month. Um, part of the fun of this was being able to do this stuff to make it right. Now, once again, like I said, if you was to buy that other kit from uh, Italia or whatever it's called, most of this would already be there for you. Uh, that's a much newer mold from what I understand. It was... Uh, theirs was uh, molded from a 2000, year 2000 mold, 
where this is probably from back in the 70s or early 80s. So you can see the difference, you know, between the two different kits. But like I said, that other kit, I tell you, is about twice as expensive. But that was part of the fun of this thing, this little build, I think, was, was doing all this stuff back here and figuring out a couple of the challenges of how I was going to do certain things. So I think that's about it for this video. Uh, like I said, I, I think when you come back, I'll have it all finished. I'll have some rope on it. Uh, I got to make my little bumpers yet out of rope. There's a couple of them. And the cleats, I'll be painting them off of the boat. Be easier. Uh, and then I'll stick them on there when I get them done. So, but there you go. I'm going to do a little sanding and, and touching up on this. Reprimer it and it will be ready. Then I'll go and repaint the bottom again black. And then I got to go out and get my paint for this thing yet. And uh, I'll get it shot. And, and that's about it. Just a matter of putting all the little pieces in. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, one, one thing I do want to tell you though. Before I do any painting or primering, what I always do is take some uh, alcohol. Okay, this is 70% uh, alcohol right here. And I'll just take and put this on a rag like that. And before I do any painting or primer, I'll wipe down wherever I'm going to shoot a color. And what this does is it picks up any dust and it gets rid of any fingerprints or oils from your hand or anything and it'll give you a much better finish so once I, uh, I sand on this and get ready to primer it again I'll wipe it down uh, I'll go back to my bottom and I'll wipe it down all real good and then shoot that black again um, that's, a, that's a good thing to do right there uh, if you're going to paint anything I can see all kinds of specks of little dust you can blow and wipe as good as you want but you're always going to have little specks of dust on there uh, I know a lot of guys use what they call a uh, oh, what the hell do they call it a uh, tack rag T-A-C-K rag it's kind of sticky uh, but I prefer this I prefer alcohol wipe it down with alcohol and it'll clean it up real good okay so I think that's going to be about it for this week uh, like I said, next week will probably be a long video because it'll be finished, and uh, I guess that's it. Not much else to say, other than thanks for watching.